happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy 21st birthday to TT. What's good? Welcome to the club. Ooh, that mother gets spicy, huh? Oh, yeah, that's good stuff, huh? <laughs> he said tastes like doo-doo water. <laughs> Y'all couldn't hear him. But welcome to the Two-Tone Podcast, episode number 25. The young, the youngest child is finally 21, so we can all finally turn up, have a good time, just be <clears throat> wild with mess adults. How was it, T? How was it? The shot? Yeah, how was the shot? Tastes like doo-doo water. I'm about to say I, with a hint of apple. <laughs> I I uh in my uh, miscreant days I grew up uh sipping on the vodka, so I've come to uh come to quite enjoy it honestly. But we doing a little science experiment in here. Don't mind us. But as I said, welcome to the Two Tone Podcast. My name is Jalen Kale, and alongside me, as always, Yo Kale, how you doing? <laughs> Look like you trying to do a. a What's the damn uh, hourglass or some shit, but with alcohol? I might say, don't mix it up too much. The beer will fizz everywhere. Uh, But yeah, it's been a great time teaching TT the ropes of, uh, you know, being an adult. A, uh, I I don't know if I should do it. I mean, you can if you want to. It ain't. But then I, I, I I still want to drink this. (laughs) Yeah, just put it back in your drink. It'll be okay. All right, hot start to the episode, as uh, Liam would say, but. How does it feel to uh, finally be 21, T? Ugh. <laughs> um, <laughs> he says spicy. <laughs> Why is it spicy? I mean, nothing special. It's just 21 to me. I understand that. I must say, I, I always feel like, um, you know, the the older I got, the more it was just like, you know, my birthday is another day. It was never really like a, a really big kind of event, except for you know your first couple your first couple birthdays are a, a big f- a fun party time. But you yeah. know, I feel like after eighteen, it just kind of after know, you hit high school. I'm at this after eighteen. I feel like you you just you're just kind of sitting there waiting for three years to become twenty one. You know, but I mean like, why is it spicy? Um. Even in high school, it wasn't like anything crazy. Uh, didn't really have parties or anything. Yeah, I'm about to say it. Definitely, definitely, most of my birthday parties, at least, were uh, were with the family. You know, at grandma's house or uh, or aunt or uncle's house. You know. Yeah. But I've never really been one for a huge birthday celebration. You know. I went out with my friends on my 21st birthday. It was a, you know, it was a couple of days after cuz it was on a weekday, so had to wait till the weekend for everybody to be off, but <clears throat> we went out to the bar and it was uh it was quite the wild time to uh, say the least. I won't won't uh, hinder y'all's day with the details of it. But um it was a good time, man. It was a great time. Did you uh did you enjoy your uh, birthday night out? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean we just went out to eat, really. Oh, I see. We went out and then uh, we went to a tiki bar, but yeah, one of wasn't. our uh, one of our friends' dads uh, built a tiki bar in their backyard. So it wasn't crazy or anything, but yeah, it was fun. It was a good time, you know. You had a couple drinks, a uh, couple drinks at the tiki. You got <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> you really don't like that beer, huh? No. <laughs> oh lord. <laughs> You can hop off and get a uh, get that seltzer out the fridge if you really want to. <coughs> I ain't gonna pressure you to drink it if you don't want to. But well, fucking, we need. Can we just get like brothers alcohol? <laughs> <laughs> the Long Islands. Yeah, I'm about to say we went out to uh, brothers and they got these 32 ounce Long Islands, and uh, you know, imagine just 32 ounces of Long Island right to the right to the old blood vein. It's uh, it's quite the drink. And they they don't even taste like alcohol really. It's kind of they got a whole list of flavors, you know. I always end up getting like the grape or the blue ras one, but they got all sorts of Long Islands. It's ridiculous. 
and about one of them bitches it's about night night if you ha- if you got if you got two maybe even one and a half it's uh, it can be a wild time you know i just don't like beer I, I don't blame you, honestly. It's just bread in a bottle, basically. <laughs> You're not wrong, honestly. It's uh, it's definitely an acquired taste. I, at the beginning of uh, whenever I started drinking, I I definitely didn't like beer. I always felt like if I'm going to drink, I'm going to drink, you know, hard liquor or, you know, something along that lines, a mixed drink, probably. I want something that'll taste good. I get that. I might have to say there's definitely some beers that you can find that are more tolerable tolerable than others. That's why I don't really care for whiskey or bourbon or anything like that as of right now. I might have to say you're only 21. You definitely, I feel like now is definitely when you uh, start figuring out what you like and what you don't. <clears throat> well, not even saying that, you know, you have to drink, but. It's uh it's it's an interesting uh, endeavor if you uh if you do it responsibly, you know. This is my first drink since my birthday party. Yeah, hell yeah. How drunk did you end up getting on your at your party? Right, or on your birthday, rather. Uh I mean I wasn't really drunk. On a scale of one to ten. You know. Probably a three. Okay. That's I not didn't too feel bad. drunk. I'm about to say we really only had one one uh one drink that had liquor in it and then you had a couple uh mics throughout the night. And we also had like a pretty big meal, so you know, you had a bunch of greasy food sitting on your stomach to soak up all the alcohol. That's always uh that's always a fun game to play. You know, you start drinking and then you're like, Oh fuck, I haven't I haven't eaten anything all day and then you know you're sitting on three shots on your empty stomach and then you're like, Holy fuck, I'm about to I'm about to go to sleep, dog. Um, but, uh, definitely, uh, word word from the wise. Eat something before you drink. You know? I mean, I did drink. I I felt like I drank a lot. It was a decent amount, honestly. I drank I that say. thirty-two ounce Long Island. Um, I had like had three or yeah. four mics, and then I had a a little bit of uh, an old fashioned. Yeah, I'm about to say you just wanted to kind of try it. You weren't really sure about a uh, whiskey in the beginning of it, yeah. but you were like, "Hey, I've 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 heard of this drink, so you know, might as well try it." And uh, they had the stuff at the uh, at the tiki to make it, so you know, went in Rome. But <clears throat> did you uh, did you end up liking the old fashioned? Um, I mean, I wouldn't. It wasn't bad, but it also wasn't good at the same time. Yeah, whiskey is definitely an acquired taste, especially as especially with. Uh, it was like super like earthy and yeah. like tasted like a fire. So what they use in a whiskey or what the fuck was it? Old fashioned, right? Yeah, it's a uh, whiskey and then a little bit of uh, what they call bitters, <clears throat> and then uh, some court some sort of uh, sugar. You know, either agave syrup or a, a sugar cube. You know, and then a little orange. Yeah. And uh, I feel like the bitters is what makes it so uh, such like a earthy, you know, like heavy, almost like smoky kind of flavor, you know. But I mean, like I've, I'll probably have it again at some point in my life. But as of twenty one, and it being like one of my first drinks, probably not. I'm about to say I, I honestly was uh, kind of surprised when you were like, I want to try a uh, old fashioned. I was like, what the fuck? Who are you? You got a cigar and a fucking three-piece suit, dog? What are you doing? We're outside by a bonfire. Well, I mean, you know me. I've always been an old head. Yeah, always into the uh, older kind of shit in life. But, anyways, we got a... Sorry. (laughs) I'm going to say he doesn't like it, but he keeps drinking it. (laughs) Uh, I like the apple taste, and then like when the beer taste hits, it's like, no. (laughs) So <laughs> I get that. I hundred percent get that. But also uh, mixed with the uh the apple vodka is a little like it it gives the apple flavor more flavor, but once that beer flavor hits I'm like mm. Yeah, the uh the aftertaste is what gets you, you know. Yeah. The beginning flavor, you're like, Oh, this is nice. A little a little green apple and then you're like, Oh, 
This is this is beer. This is not <laughs> that's gross. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay off of that. I like the apple. Don't like the beer. Yeah, that's hilarious. Anyways, um, if y'all are new to the podcast, I just dropped the EP a couple months ago. It's called Unfucks Whittable. It's on uh, all streaming platforms. Uh, you can go to linktree. dot com slash jak productions. Mm-hmm. What are you doing over there? I don't know. This motherfucker trying to ruin my goddamn. <laughs> My reads. Anyways, linktree.com slash J-A-K productions for uh, all my music on Apple and uh, Spotify. And I think there's also YouTube links on there now. But um, also my Instagram and Twitter and whatnot's on there. Um, and the uh, Feeling Generous tab, all the proceeds go to the uh, Two Tune podcast to uh, improve the set. You know, like how we were able to paint the studio and whatnot. But hit him with your spiel real quick, T. Uh, my name is Theo Kale. Uh, I make films. You can find my films at uh, Glasshouse Films 8 on YouTube. And if you ever want to be a part in helping in any way, you can contact me at Glasshouse Films 8 on Instagram. That's yep. about it. Hell yeah. Right on. All right. Well, we got a... Uh we got quite the interest in, interest in episode for y'all, so uh, let's get on into it. Welcome back to the Two Tone Podcast. Uh, as I said, my name is Jay Lenko. All right, T's hopping out for a second, so it's just the two of us. Um, you know, how you doing? What you been up to? Oh, uh, yeah, me too. I ain't been up to shit. But, um, you know, I, I be doing what I do, you know. I be making music. I actually got a, a, a music video idea that I came up with the other day. And, uh, you know, it's pretty simple, you know, just me and... Uh, a couple props and then you know the rest of it's really in the editing i feel like it's gonna be it's gonna be quite the uh quite the interesting video honestly i'm uh, really excited about making it it's this song that i made you know and uh i had this one lyric stuck in my head for like a week and a half this motherfucker hell yeah <laughs> <laughs> he grabbed a beer and some snacks. But anyway, I had this song idea for, uh, you know, I had this one lyric stuck in my head for about two days at work. And, uh, you know, I just kind of built this song around it. And it turned out to be like one of my favorite songs that I've written so far. We shut the door all the way. But I haven't talked to TT about it. We'll get into it right now. So I was uh, telling the lovely listeners here that uh, I have an idea for a music video, right? And uh, it's pretty simple music video, you know. Calm down with the with the bag over there, big dog. I've, I'll punch you right in the head. Anyway, so I've been t- I was telling the people here, I have an idea for the music video, and uh, you know it's pretty simple, just me and the camera, you know. But a lot of it's gonna be in the in the post and editing, you know. It's gonna be a lot of uh, a lot of flashy editing kind of techniques, you know. I gotta learn how to uh, use Premiere a little bit better. Might have to, uh, might have to FaceTime Kyle and uh, learn some secrets about it. But uh, I was thinking, you know, I'm like, and uh, I was thinking maybe kind of make it like a, uh, like do one, one cut of the uh, music video when it's like summery kind of fall time and then do the second cut when it's like winter and snowy and you know just have like the contrast of two different uh you know seasons in the music video yeah i'll I'll talk to you more about i don't want to give away too much of the uh, idea but i have this song I i don't know if i showed it to you or not but i'll have to show it to you after the podcast but it's quite the idea. It's a cooking cooking up in the noggin. 
Speaking of uh, doing news, sh- you fucking kill him, and you gotta turn it around so we don't get uh, copyrights. <laughs> this motherfucker. <laughs> All right. So, um, speaking of uh, coming up with new ideas, uh, we're <laughs> <laughs> caught your ass at four K, bro. This episode is about to be unhinged as fuck. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> Uh, oh lord what the fuck was i even talking oh yeah speaking about making sorry guys uh i need some food in my stomach and i didn't eat so good lord all right and so drinking on an empty stomach is not a good idea oh yeah he said i uh Jalen was just talking about you know drink drink on an empty stomach you might be fucked up but he said like, i gotta, gotta get some chips man some some some, some sustenance and some chips i need some this motherfucker some oh, bread lord. And chips were the closest thing to the bread that we had. Unless you wanted me to grab the fucking loaf of bread and just eat that. <laughs> but I would have fucking pissed myself if he just grabbed a loaf of bread from the <laughs> fucking <laughs> you know, The numbers would have gone through the fucking roof if I just cut back to you and you're just sitting there with a fucking loaf of white bread just <laughs> It's dead. Oh my fucking god! I'm sorry, y'all. If y'all have to listen to this podcast, oh fucking Jesus! All right, speaking I of got making some jalapeno flavored chips for you. Oh, thanks, you bud. I will grab some. Speaking of uh, making new shit, thank you. Speaking of making new shit, mm-hmm. uh, word on the street is uh, you got some uh, some people that are gonna be helping you on your uh, your short film that you're making. Yeah. Well. They haven't given a definite yes or no. God damn. Noisy over there. I know, right, bro? <laughs> That's why I, I muted my mic just so I didn't have to make all that noise in the fucking in y'all's ears. But um I uh have they haven't given me a definite yes or no for that, but I have asked them about it and they said it like I gave them a couple of scripts, and they said they decided that uh, one of the scripts that they would be interested in seeing more about. So I'm working on that one right now. Oh uh, yeah, which uh, have you shared uh, which script they're interested in on the podcast yet? Spiff, Diff, and Kush. Oh yeah, I forgot we had talked about that one a little bit. Give me a uh, recap on what the. Uh, like the premise of that one is. I remember talking about the characters, but I don't remember what the premise was. So it's like a comedy action film, basically. Mm-hmm. And uh, these three friends uh, go to a party and get handed a briefcase full of something, and they are they try and figure out what to do with it to give it back or not. And um, they decide to just keep it in the whole chasing and action. So it's just, <clears throat> it's just like the group of uh, Spiff, Diff, and Kush mm-hmm. against, you know, like whatever the uh, antagonist is in the group, you know, whether it be a, a group of people or just one person or whatever. Yeah. It definitely sounds like it could be a, uh, could be quite the uh, interesting uh, short film, you know? It uh it reminds me, have you seen um Oh Lord, what's the what's the name of this T V show? I wanna say it's like Good Moms or something like that. No. Never seen it. And it is about so like this group of like three moms mm-hmm. gets together because they're trying to rob this bank or this grocery store because they need money. But it turns out that, like, this cartel is laundering their money through the grocery store. So they thought they were only going to get, like, $25,000, but they end up getting, like, $400,000, you know? And they're like, holy shit, what what do we do with all this money? There's no, like, we can't just go and give it back. We just robbed this fucking store, you know? Is it moms or grandpas? Because I've seen a film with grandpas in it. It's moms, yeah. Has that basic it was to it? It had, like four or five seasons but they never finished the show because like drama between the cast and the director or whatever it was but um i'm gonna say sam was watching it i want to say it's it's called good moms it was on uh netflix i want to say 
excuse me. Or it had um uh what's her nuts? She's in Parks and Rec. Oh, I have a I think I have a picture of her somewhere. Going in style. Have you seen that? No, what's that about? So it's Morgan Freeman, Michael Caine, and Alan Arkin. Uh huh. And they're three old guys and they decide that like they're getting fucked over by their job and not getting paid enough. So they just and they get like laid off and so they go and decide to rob a bank. Um it's kind of funny. Oh, uh, I know the actions. I've heard what you're talking about. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. I've never seen it though. It uh, what I've seen from like the trailers of that show or like the ads for it or whatever, you know. It is kind of similar to the TV show. But the TV show kind of goes the one that I'm that I was thinking about. It goes in more of like a serious kind of direction. Um I don't know. Let me see what it's called because it's going to bug the shit out of me. Um, oh, Lord. I don't know how to type. I believe it's called, yeah, it's called Good Moms. Or no, Good Girls. Yeah, it's called Good Girls on uh, Netflix, I think. I don't know. I can't find it. Anyways, the show is called Good Gir- Good Girls. And it's about these three moms, you know, as I said. And uh, I must say, Spiff Diff and Kush kind of reminds me of uh, something adjacent to that, you know, not not necessarily the same uh, the same story, but it always kind of interests me how it seems like all sorts of writers and stuff when they when they make a movie, there's you know like a group of three people, you know, you got the Three Stooges, you got Harry Potter with uh, what's his dick, what's his nuts, and what's her puss? Harry Potter, Ron, and Hermione. Yeah, you got it. Uh, I said, and Harry Potter, and then couldn't think of Harry Potter's name. That's fucking, wow. Sorry. All right. Um, But, you know, in all these, you know, super famous movies, you got this trope of three people. It's always, it's always kind of baffled me, like, why three people? What was what was your reasoning in making uh, Spiff Diff and Kush? Um, and give me like a little rundown of their personality so I understand like why they're why they're in this group together. So one day I was just at work. I was trying to come up with titles or just like ideas for film, and the three words Spiff Diff and Kush popped up in my head. So I ran with it. That's fair enough. I was about to say, I was listening to a different podcast this morning and they were talking about where that like inspiration comes from. What, in your opinion, where do those like just random ass ideas that they seemingly come out of nowhere? What, what do you attribute that to? T to the I to the S to the M. <laughs> Tils. We can't ep- we can't name this episode Tism Baby Two, bro. Oh my god! But I've it, it's always been one of those things that you know. It's it's such a random. It's such a random thing that pops into your head that gives you an idea for you know whatever you're making really. You're just sitting there and then, you know, seemingly like one second later, you're like, holy shit, I have this idea for this thing. And, you know, and you go and fucking create this entire thing, you know, seemingly out of thin air. But, um, yeah, the, the basic, um, personalities of these three people is Spiff is a guy who is always trying to look like he's smarter than everybody. So he, like, dresses in suits and stuff and always looks presentable and nice. Diff is a person who's different. So he dresses in, like, weird kind of clothing that you wouldn't really see people. Like, more eccentric kind of guy? Yeah. And then Kush is just, you know, 
Kush, like marijuana. He smokes a bunch of J's. That's going to be me. Don't worry about that guy. But, uh, they all, d- I don't have a backstory on how they became friends, but they're friends. I have an idea for Kush's backstory. I'll give it to you after the podcast, just so, uh, you know. Okay. All nine people that watch the pod don't steal your idea, but, or, you know, my idea, rather. <clears throat> but, anyways. What you want to talk about? We already, oh, I always forget the fucking quote of the week. So I'm going to do the quote of the week. Primero uno. That's first for uh, all y'all that don't speak Spanish. Anyways, quote of the week. Yes. It's from The Office. Mm-hmm. I knew exactly what to do, but in a more real sense, I had no idea what to do. From Michael Scott. And that quote embodies my entire fucking life, you know. You think you think you got it figured out, you know. You think you know what to do, and then something happens. You're like, I don't, I don't fucking know what to do. I have no idea in the slightest what to do. I have no idea where to start. And, you know, anyways, let's get on into the uh, album of the week. So, the album of the week is from... One of my personal favorite artists, Senor Denzel Curry. And now, Denzel, if you're watching, and I know that you're not. Washington or Curry. Denzel, you know, either one. Me and uh, me and Mr. Curry are on a first name basis. All right, Denzel, listen to this shit, bro. So, like, about six years ago, you were supposed to come to Indianapolis and open for ASAP Ferg. And then you were like, oh my god, I got sick. Wow. And it never came and fucking performed, bro. And I was so pissed because I literally bought a ticket to come see Denzel Curry. I could have left after Denzel and never even seen ASAP. But somebody else ended up opening for ASAP Ferg, and it was a grand old time. But ever since that day, me and Denzel Curry have never been able to meet up at a concert. So I bought tickets to Bonnaroo the year of covid and denzel curry was supposed to play at bonnaroo and so you know i was like oh shit i missed him three years ago i'm about to go see him at bonnaroo and it's gonna be a crazy time and then bonnaroo got canceled and i you know sat there and cried a little bit i ain't even gonna lie but um i ended up watching him they had him perform on uh they broadcasted it on hulu or whatever and i watched it but you know it was essentially just watching another music video, but ever since then, I've never had the opportunity to see Denzel Curry like in, uh, you know, live. And I've always loved Denzel Curry, you know, ever since the fucking, you know, ding, 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 ding. I am the one no way you talk. You know, the ultimate uh, song. And then, uh, you know, like, the day before he was supposed to come to Indianapolis, he dropped a fucking banger. It was called Sumo. And, you know, I was just sitting, you know, sitting there just waiting for Denzel to play this song. And then he was like, I ain't showing up because I got sick. And I was like, <sighs> straight depression, bro. But, anyways, enough about me and Denzel Curry's uh, relationship that's non-existent. But um, have you have you listened to the album, T? You fucking kill me. Um, Try not to crunch in the people's ears, okay? <laughs> Fair enough, I suppose. So, what were your uh, what were your impressions of uh, Denzel Curry? Are you familiar with his uh, catalog at all? Yeah. What's your uh, What would you say is your favorite Denzel Curry song? These nuts. I don't know. Um, probably the first one you said. The ultimate one. Yeah, it is a pretty good song. I ain't even gonna lie, but uh, you know, in the in the whole album, I feel like it's kind of uh, it's kind of like a tribute to like early two thousands, you know, kind of rap. You know, it's it's just a straight, you know, South Florida rap album. You know what we should change this uh our um title to? Mm. Tales of Podcast. 
Good Lord, I can't fucking do nothing with this kid. Good Lord, I'm gonna stop having, <laughs> I'm gonna stop having him take drinks on the podcast. He can't control himself. But, anyways, I wanted to talk about uh, South Florida rappers. Mm-hmm. So, happy birthday to me. Even though that was three days ago. Oh yeah, I forgot to, to show. me. Forgot happy to show birthday. you. Happy birthday. <laughs> To me. Sh- you shut the fuck up. Happy birthday. To me. And many more. Until I'm 104. This is about to become a solo podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I can't fucking do I can't fucking do this shit. <laughs> I can't fucking do this shit. Oh, this my. is what you get when I'm drunk, okay? Okay. I'm going to cut Titi off at half a drink next time. I'm sorry. Y'all had the experiences. Oh, fucking Jesus. All right. So back on track with the podcast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So as you can see over Coochies. there. Coochies. Would you not scream into the fucking microphone? This guy's name's Coochies. <laughs> I'm fucking aware, bro. Oh, my God. We're going to have to cut this podcast in five minutes. Bobby Take- Fish Scales. I'm turning them off. Y'all ain't going to have to listen to them anyway. So. All right. So. In. uh, Will you move your big ass head out the way? They can't hear you. I cut your microphone off. You're being too fucking loud. Oh, this episode is so fucking unhinged. I'm sorry, y'all. All All right. You can have volume. Anyway. So in South Florida, I feel like there's a there's a really big culture of uh, hip hop in South Florida. Well, not even necessarily in South Florida. I know this guy. Who? This guy and this guy. And Why that guy. Mil- you don't know Kodak Black? I know Kodak. You don't know Rick Ross? I know Rick Ross. You don't know Denzel Curry? I know Denzel. I th- I wasn't done pointing out who I know. All right, we're going to be here all day if you point out who you know. Relax. <laughs> so, in South in Florida... I feel like starting with Rick Ross in like the early 2000s, you know, with YMZMB and uh, with him and uh, Rick, or wow, Rick Ross and Rick Ross, fuck me. Rick Ross and uh, And Gucci's. Lil Wayne and Drake and uh, Nicki Minaj and all them, you know, in the early 2000s, I feel like they kind of, uh, they kind of started putting on other rappers from the, uh, from Florida, you know, you got Kodak, you got. Ski mask, you got motherfucking snot. If y'all know about snot, check him Nardo out. Nardo Wick. Uh, I'm not. He sounds familiar. I don't really know him too much, but you know, you got Rod Wave, City Girls, all sorts of rappers that are coming out of uh, Florida. So what's Y and W? Y M W Millie. Like why? Why is there Y and W? Y and W? Uh, like is it a group? I don't know if they're in a group together. I couldn't tell you, honestly. I would assume so. I feel like it might be kind of sort of like... uh, Whopper with the chopper. (laughs) Never heard of bro. That's Whopper with the chopper. Good old Whopper. I never heard of him. But I feel like it might be something sort of like... Ah, Jesus, what the fuck was his name? Corday and... uh, I don't remember what the fuck... It might be like, a, you know, like in Call of Duty, motherfuckers got like a clan or some shit. Yeah. I feel like it might kind of be something like that. But anyways, there's all sorts of fucking rappers that come out of Florida. You know, there's something fucking, there's something different in the water in Florida. There's so many motherfuckers just putting out alligators. bangers and bangers. Alligators. It might be the alligators. I never even thought about it. It might, it might just be. What would your rap name be? Mm, that's a good question. Uh, you're moving the curtain there, bud. Um, what would my rap name be? My fucking... I was going to say J-Money, but that's kind of fucking corny as shit. Uh, uh, my fucking... Chapito. Chapito. It's a little chopper. In Spanish. This sounds like uh What would you be? What was your what would your rap name be?
Um, little TT. I damn near wrote it for you, bud. Little TT. I must say, everybody got a little, a uh, guy, motherfucking a little Uzi. Motherfucking. That's fried as fuck. That's the little, that's the only little I can think of. Right? Little ugly toes. Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne. Wow, I'm slow as fuck. Lil Wayne. Uh, Lil John. Yeah. Fuck it up, kid. I think that's all I got. Uh, Lil. Uh, I don't even know. Yeah, I, I ain't got nothing else. Lil Zan. There you go. Little hey, pump. fuck it up. All right. So last thing I wanted to talk about was this one performance that Denzel Curry put on. This motherfucker brought in a whole boxing ring, a whole motherfucking WWE style ring to do this concert. Mm-hmm. It was him. It was J.I.D. and uh, some S- other dude. Sir, that's Jid. It's uh, J.I.D. It's a Jid. I don't think it is. Anyways. But it had me thinking. I was like, that would have been such a fucking lit ass concert. You know, it was kind of like a, uh, a, uh, an amateur boxing show, you know, where the seating's kind of limited around. It wasn't like in a big old, uh, venue or nothing, but we didn't even get to the goddamn motherfucking film of the week. Yes. Motherfucker, we got 20 minutes left. What are you talking about? We got time. Calm your tits. All right. Now it's time for the film of the week. Go ahead. What's the film of the week? The Office. Hitting you again this week with another TV series. So what made you choose The Office? What's uh What's been in recent uh, inspiration that made you choose The Office? Um, I mean... I, this is the first thing I could think of, really. Fair enough. I'm gonna say you said you haven't been really watching too many, uh, too many movies recently. More uh, animes and shit. And I've been too busy. So. Yeah, fair enough. I don't blame you. I've always been a person where, like, if I put on a movie, it better be a really fucking good movie, or I'm about to take a nap for an hour and a half. But, anyways. In the office, have you seen it all the way through? Yeah. So, in your opinion, when did the office stop being as good as it as it used to be? Because I feel like there's a certain point in the series where you know you get to the top of the series and then you're just kind of like you know you're just kind of going down in content value. When Michael started dating the one chick. When he started dating Holly? No, not Holly. The other one. Jan? Yeah. That was like really early in the series. Because when he started dating Jan, it just it was more about that than anything else. I feel like that was really early in the series. I feel like there could be a there could be an argument for when he starts dating Holly. Because, you know, that's when it's like, or maybe like, I would, I would say it's when Steve Carell leaves the show. Like when, when, uh, Will Ferrell becomes the, when he becomes the boss, I feel like there's, you know, I feel like it just kind of, it just kind of became a money grab at that point, you know? There really wasn't any reason to have Will Ferrell become the boss or Andy become the boss, you know. I feel like they honestly could have just skipped the whole the whole shit where Will Ferrell was in the show. I feel like it was just kind of like, you know, look who we got for the show. And then, you know, but who would you say, uh, who is your, say is your favorite character and who would you say you uh, relate to the most in this series? Dwight. For which part? Huh? For which part of the question? Both. <laughs> this fucking dog. 
<laughs> Bro got one drink in him and he's fucking over there sauced up about to smash that whole bag of chips. I'm sorry for y'all that listen to the podcast, but at the same time, thank you. We appreciate y'all. Hit that subscribe button. That was a kiss if you uh if you couldn't tell. But anyways, I'd say my favorite character in the show, Kevin. My favorite character is Kevin, one hundred percent. He's just such a such a derpy, lovable character, you know. And the the episode where he where he fucking drops the chili all over the fucking carpet. He grabs the fucking clipboard and just trying to scoop it off the ground back into the pot. <laughs> uh, bro, the, the oh fucking Jesus. There's so many there's so many moments and and jokes in the show where Kevin is he just, you know, just puts the fucking icing on the cake with his, you know, just borderline stupidity. I feel like <clears throat> my favorite part Of uh, Dwight would be when Jim, or when he's getting married, and Jim gives him like the the hand guide to a perfect wedding or whatever the fuck it said. And Jim keeps leaving the party, and he's like Jim Halpert for like a good minute, and then he looks over at Jim and he's like, "The fuck you doing?" <laughs> he's like, "I'm grabbing my keys." Turns back around, Jim Halpert. I'm gonna say that is one of my favorite parts in the whole series. The I'm gonna say the he just he just walks like right next to him. He's like Jip, 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 Jim Halper. There's so many there's so many different pranks between uh, Jim and Dwight in the series in the like throughout the whole show that are you know as as pretty much what drives the show in my opinion. You know you you tune in each week to see how. Uh, how Jim's gonna fuck with Dwight, you know, and how Dwight's gonna react. But there's there's just such a such a great chemistry between all of the actors on that show, in my opinion. I feel like I feel like BJ Novak and all of the producers and stuff really, really, uh, you know, did their homework with choosing you who. Guys was, saw that. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. It's on me right now. Um, I feel like. They did such a such a good job at choosing peop at choosing people that could uh act together in that kind of uh in that kind of capacity, you know. Or when um Dwight does the fire safety tests on the <laughs> He fucking torches the handle yeah. because to mimic the fire or Locks whatever. All the doors and <laughs> shit. There's so many there's so many st- like skits in the series, isn't it Stanley? Black the guy? the black guy. Yeah, yeah. Or the episode when he um when they figure out he never pays attention, so they just start fucking with them. Oh, they put his they put the orange juice instead of his coffee, and then yeah. like the box over his TV screen, mm-hmm. and like Andy's sitting there with no shirt on and just as. T- <laughs> um, there's so many like bits in the show. It's it's really hard to kind of pick a favorite. A favorite, you know, moment in the show. But that being said, what would you say is your favorite moment in the show? What's one of your favorite clips from the show? Of 